it's kind of exciting. We had one of our own uh, wander out into the world and she has returned safe and sound. Malia, Malia is going to uh, make her presentation and tell us where she went, what she did. And I think Dave wanted to know uh, if there was any significant impact on her exchange because of the COVID-19. So Malia, I think we'll turn it over to you and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um... Never had to share a screen before, so this might take me a second. <laughs> but I made, oh, how am I able to share? I made a presentation for you guys. So, so I on the screen there should be uh, up where you have the sound and the video. There should be a share screen. It's green colored, and if you would hit that, okay. it says host disabled. Okay. TV. Um, Dave, or can Dave, or uh, one of the guys can uh, allow, share you as the presenter. I think that's Dale. Yeah. Dale, are you there? Try it now. Okay. I'm still disabled. <laughs> still disabled, Dave. Sorry, I'm working on it as fast as I can. <laughs> Dave, if you make her a co-host, she'll be, have those permissions. Dale must be, um, he must be getting a place in line for the big parade. The clock, the clock behind Malia makes a nice halo for her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, I don't hear. Okay, there she is, co-host. There you are. Perfect. Um, How about now? Can you do it now, Malaya? Yeah. I'm trying Good. to. Dave, do you have any advice? I don't really. Um, Hit the share screen at the bottom and. Yeah, I had done that, and then it's saying. Um, Just select one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then just go to the application that you're going to use, and. Uh, okay. Bring it to the screen. Is it a PowerPoint? There we go. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So, you want to expand your? There you go. Got it. Okay. So, hi guys. Thank you for coming and listening to my exchange year. Um, before I started, I just wanted to say thank you for this opportunity. It was. Honestly, one of the best experiences of my life. And I like, it's so hard for me to be back, but I'm also so grateful to be back with such a loving family. But the exchange here is just amazing. So, yeah. So I did this in like a, in three slides, kind of trying to explain the basis of it. Um, so this is like my first half of exchange, probably to like mid-November to December a little bit. And um, yeah, so the big photo on the bottom of the screen with all of the exchange students, that was one of the um, get togethers that we had called um, Intro Camp. Because Denmark is so small, we were all able to meet in one place, all the, all the Rotary Exchange students that came in from there. And we all ended up meeting and we left, I think I left my town Thursday and I came back Sunday or Monday. Um, and we just spent the weekend doing a bunch of icebreakers and playing games all together. Um, there was like plays and then we did a lot of culture shocks and stuff. And then I remember one of the main things that we had done that was really gross was in Denmark, they love black licorice. And we had to put it in our mouth for a minute, I think. And a lot of other countries don't eat black licorice like Danish people do. And it was salty black licorice. And that was one of the big culture shocks that you never knew when your group was doing it. So it was like when the first group had done it, everyone else was kind of like not wanting to do it. So that was really fun. 
Um, the Polaroids in, this, in these, um, they're kind of sporadic through this presentation because I ended up actually taking a Polaroid every single day of my exchange as a memorabilia for it so that I could remember um, everything that I had done. The fruit next to the one with the main Polaroids, um, that was in Barcelona. So as a study trip with my class in Denmark, we went to Barcelona for a week and we studied um, their culture and how they're having struggles right now with um, Catalonia and Barcelona and how they want to separate themselves. And then we went into some of their schools and then we learned what they did and we followed some of their art classes and English classes. And it was super exciting and it was fun to hear, but also kind of sad to hear about their struggles with what they're doing right now and the how half the city is separated from the other half of the city and all that kind of stuff. Um, that photo next to that picture of fruit, that's my friend Brooke, and we are actually in Copenhagen in that photo. Um, Copenhagen is the capital of Denmark and it is beautiful. That main strip is called Newhoun and it is the most tourist and visited places in Denmark and it is just absolutely beautiful and the people are wonderful and up and down that whole entire street is just a bunch of food venues and stuff where you can just eat whatever you want and they have a variety of different things. They have about 10 ice cream shops and I have to say some of the best ice cream I've ever eaten in my entire life. <laughs> Despite that it wasn't Italian, it was amazing. <laughs> so it was amazing. Um, and then that photo next to the one in Copenhagen and then on the bottom right of the screen, those girls are from my class. So the way that the Danish school systeming works is in the second year of what they would of directly translated it would be high school and i was in the second year and we have a class so we're with the same people every day all day but we just switch teachers during the day for the subjects and those were um my best friends in my class i did everything with them and then the photo where it says coffee on the door i took that photo in a local coffee shop um, in my town and that was the first time that those girls had asked me to go hang out with them and go eat and I remember that day so vividly we went to coffee and then they took me to the mall and it was just so much fun and it was like it was just so amazing to be with them so yeah that was kind of the beginning of my exchange was just getting to know people traveling through the country that was one of the good things about Denmark being so small is if I ever wanted to go to Copenhagen to see the other exchange students I could just get on a train and it was about $40 or something like that. And I could just get on a train for five hours, spend the weekend in Copenhagen, and then come right back up. And it was just absolutely amazing. And one of my favorite parts about how small Denmark was, how easy it was to travel and see people. Um, and then on this next slide, it's a little different. Um, this one is probably end of November, beginning of December-ish till about March. Um, so in the photos where we're all dressed up in costumes and stuff, we had this get together in November, I think it was, or beginning of November, something like that, I think. And it was called the Holbeck Get Together. And it was Halloween because um, I guess they do it every year because a lot of people want to experience the um, United States Halloween culture because not many other countries do it. Um, and we all dressed up and then on top of the dressing up, so everyone got in their outfits and then we went to this nice dinner inside of um, a high school, I guess you could say. And every country had to give a performance on um, something that was very much like their culture. So I know people from, I think Brazil and Argentina, they did like beautiful um, dances and stuff. And along with um, Indonesia and India, they had given dances that represented their culture very well. And there was a few funny skits like Australia, they have very different accents and ways that they that they say things. So they gave a skit kind of saying all their Australian things that no one else would understand. And that was very interesting. And um, us from the US, we decided to give a football game. And that was <laughs> very exciting to see everyone just very confused because they've only ever seen it on TV. And we all dressed up and we had, um, face paint on and we had like um team jerseys and we had a ref and then we had a ball and we just did like a full-blown game and then we got like three or four people to be the cheerleaders so it was very fun and that was just that whole weekend was just us like all representing our cultures and just having a fun time being all together and that was a very fun weekend it was our last weekend all together 
I think we were supposed to have one more, but due to Corona, that one was canceled. But that was an amazing and fun weekend. Um, the photo next to us, I'm with two other friends, the redhead in the white shirt and then the girl with brown hair and the green shirt. Um, the guy, his name is Nikolai and the girl is, her name is Ida and they were my best friends on exchange. They were in a different class with me and than me and I had only one class with them and we had psychology together because the psychology classes were broken up in the second year and I remember having psychology with them and um, I actually don't really remember exactly how we met but Nikolai was very outgoing, the redhead, and just I remember one day he invited me to go eat dinner with him or something like that and we've been friends ever since and he still texts me to this day along with Ida and they were just like they were they were my lovely best friends on exchange and I'm so happy I got to meet them and that photo was actually taken during this thing called um, Yule Focused which directly translated as Christmas lunch and it's all throughout December a lot of Danish people do it as a way to celebrate and you get together and you eat this thing called fliskestai um, and it's like the back of a pig and it's pork and then it has um, <laughs> fried pork skin on top of it and then you eat it with potatoes and then like this parsley sauce and they call it parsilicum and I was like oh it was disgusting but I was like I'm just gonna go <laughs> just I just won't use the sauce but it was just it was so much fun and that was one of the photos that we had taken that night um and then the photo of me with the girl with the super duper curly hair um her name is Ella and she was my oldie um she went to the same school as me and she had come in January last year so she left January this year um, and we were so close and I am so grateful to have her because um, it was only her, me and Gabriel. We were the only exchange students in our school and everyone else was about 30 to 40 minutes from us. So we got super close. She's from New Zealand um, and she was just such a lovely oldie. She made sure, I remember she didn't talk to me for the first two months. She didn't talk to Gabriel or I, and we were so upset because we were like, why would you not talk to us? We were like, that's so rude. And then once we finally got established with friends and stuff, she had said that she never talked to us because she wanted us to have our own friends before we came dependent on her, which is really nice. But I didn't like her for like the first week or two because every time she saw me in the hall, she would just smile, but like never did anything about like other than that. And I was like, that is so rude. But <laughs> she ended up becoming one of my favorite people that I had met on exchange. So I'm grateful for what she did because it was very easy for me to make Danish friends since I wasn't dependent on her presence. Um, and then the photos of, um, so there's a, two photos right next to each other and I'm in a blue dress and there's other people in like tuxes and other formal gowns. And then there's also one in the left hand corner as well. And those photos were taken when we did this dance called Longchia. It's a French dance and it's about 25 minutes long. And every person in the third year does it because that's their last year. And then the exchange students do it as well and um it was a very complicated dance it was very stressful it was very long but it was also so much fun so we began the day around six o'clock you would meet up with your class and you would have like a pre-snack i don't know why it was a pre-snack but we had a pre-snack together <laughs> and then we would go to the school and we would have um a very formal dinner and everything like the guys would dress up in suits and the girls would dress up nice and then we would go watch a play. And then after the play, we would go do this dance. If you were a third year or the exchange students. And then if you weren't dancing, you would just watch it. And it was such a fun dance. Gabriel in the bottom left-hand corner, he was my partner during this dance. Um, and it was just so much fun. And at the end of the dance, we do this thing. Um, so back in the crowd, you go get your supplies and you can get like crowns and some people put on like fairy wings or other people would put on like um masquerade hats and stuff and we would just see like how long people would walk i remember one group they had umbrellas and they had masquerade ones and fairy wings it was very very strange but it was just like to see who could have the most like crazy outfit and could capture the group's eyes and it was so much fun to see that because i'd never seen that before so it made the training worth it because I think we trained for about two hours every day because it had to be perfect, perfect. And it was very stressful, but it was so much fun. Um, the bottom left, right hand corner, sorry, the bottom right hand corner, that is my exchange group of friends at my birthday party. 
um, so someone had spilled some water on the floor or some soda. I don't, I forget what it was, but they spilled something. And my friend Laura had fell, fallen and she's from Australia and everyone thought she was just joking. So everyone decided to go in and take a photo with her. And it was such a funny photo. And I had, I remember I had sent it to her when she was on her way home. And then um, she went to the doctors cause she was still in pain. And then come to find out she had dislocated her knee and no one knew. And she didn't even know cause she said it didn't hurt that bad. But it was just such a funny photo cause nobody had known. And she didn't even know either. And we were all just like, playing around and just messing around with it. So that's the, she's the one on the floor in the tan jacket. And that's when she had dislocated her knee, but we all thought she was just fallen and she just hurt it a little bit. So it's a very funny photo that we all show each other and we just think it's so funny. And that group of pic or that picture I also love as well because um, it's full of people from all around the world. We have Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, Argentina, um, Brazil and then some other places in the United States so I just that's one of my favorite photos and it's just the story behind it is amazing um, the two photos next to that those are or that was my host dog Sfinda so I actually ended up staying with my second family for the rest of my exchange I stayed with my first family until about November 16th or so and then I got to my second family and I just completely fell in love. I was so happy. I connected with them. The host sisters, I had two little host sisters. One was 11 and one was 14. Um, they became my best friends. We did everything together. And I, um, the photo where the dog looks a little dirty, I had gone on a walk with my second host sister, the little one, she's 11. We went to go pick up some eggs at a friend's house. And Spinda, he's a hunting dog. And we didn't know there was a pond near where we were. And sometimes we'll let him run around <laughs> wherever we're going and then he'll come back to us. But he found this pond and I think he thought we were letting him go hunt. And he starts running and then we hear water splashing. And then we like start freaking out because we're like, we're, he's dirty or whatever. And then he came out and that's what he looked like. And my host mom just thought it was the funniest thing because this walk was probably not even 10 minutes from our house, but it was separated by a large field of grass and water. So when we came back like that, she just thought it was hilarious. So she's like, I have to take this photo because he came back or he left a clean dog and came back a dirty dog. And that was so much fun. And my host parents thought it was so funny. But the photo next to him, the one where I'm like holding him, um, that's what he normally looks like. <laughs> he's not that dirty and he's such a good dog. Um, and yeah, it was, I loved having him there. It was so cute. And then the last photo on the screen that I haven't talked about, the one next to the dirty dog, um, <laughs> is food that I actually ended up making. So during the coronavirus, I found out how much I love to cook and my host family loved trying out all my new things. And um, I grew up in a relatively more Asian home. My mom's Asian, so I grew up eating Asian food. And I was like, this is my time to teach my host family and show them all the things I grew up eating. <laughs> so we would make spring rolls together. I think I made curry and pho, and I did all these like different dishes for them. This one was, I think it's macaroni and chicken parmesan. Um, that was the only decent photo that I had because all the other ones I had taken videos for, but I just remember I love cooking and then they would teach me all their Danish desserts and stuff. And it was just super fun. So I think I probably cooked one or two times almost every week before I had left, which was so much fun. And then, there we go. and then this is the last slide. Um, so this was near the end of my exchange. This was everybody, this was just, um, cause I had found out I was coming home at a very slow or at a very um, fast pace. So it was very much like, okay, this is our time. We're gonna do everything we can in this last three weeks. Um, so the first, um, the first or last week, I forget it was, the last like two weeks was just one big clump for me. But in between those weeks, um, we had gone to, we have a summer house at my host family's place. And um, we had gone to the summer house and near the summer house, it's more near Copenhagen. So there's, that's more where like the castles are and everything. So the thing that looks like a big loop going up into the air, kind of, that is a two, more than 200 feet, I think, high tower. And it's about a two mile walk in and a two mile walk out. And it was so beautiful and it's a ring and it was actually 
built a little less than a year ago and you just walk like this for about 15 minutes and all of a sudden you're up at the top of this and you can see so far away from, or like you can just see the overhead of the towns and it was absolutely beautiful and um it was actually really cool because on the top on the bottom on like the metal they had placed like if you go however far you want you'll be in um venice italy and then if you go like an extra if you walk down five more feet it would show you somewhere else if you were to walk eight thousand miles this way you would be in england or something so it was just on top of this whole thing it was just absolutely beautiful like you could just see if you were to just keep walking it there would just be another beautiful place to go visit and i was like let's start walking now i can just tell my parents i got lost on my way home and we can just end up in like italy or something so that was amazing um the photo right next to that it's the yellow building that is actually a castle so because denmark is so old they're just full of castles we actually have a queen there right now she's been there she's been queen for 45 years i think and she's still queen um and it was such a beautiful castle and that's one of their they have hundreds and hundreds of castles um and it was absolutely beautiful. I didn't have a photo of the back, but if you turned around, it looked like something straight out of a movie. There was these nice like concrete stairs that went down and opened up into this beautiful waterfall on like seven to 10 acres of like just pure grassland. And there was just like kids everywhere. And it was just like statues and stuff. It was like something straight out of a movie. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, and then the photo next to, um, the tower uh, under where we're eating the ice cream that photo is also another castle and that used to be a castle and now it's an orphanage for kids so kids who don't have families and stuff they live there and i was like that is the nicest orphanage i have ever seen in my entire life but i guess it's like one of the more beautiful orphanages and it's very um it was just absolutely beautiful and i did not think it was a for orphanage until they had told me about that and i just thought it was amazing um above that um is the ice cream so that last week part of all this was a lot of lot of walking of walking everywhere all day every day for about four days and i am not the most athletic type so i thought that was very difficult <laughs> and neither is my younger host sister the one with the peace signs up so my host mom had bribed us with ice cream every day if we went on these walks so that was i think our fourth day of the same ice cream <laughs> and it was so funny because she's like it's more expensive for me to buy you guys ice cream than to take you guys these places but it was just so funny and our host mom thought it was the, just the funniest thing about that um and then the photos next the photo next to that that's a place called moons clint and it is a 500 step walk to the bottom and a 500 step walk up to the top oh i wanted to sleep so much after that walk up and down it was so long it was so hard but it was so beautiful and so worth it um, it was kind of cloudy that day, so it's not as beautiful as I've seen in pictures, but I heard if you go on a sunny day, the water is like a teal, but even though it was cloudy, it was probably one of the more beautiful beaches I'd ever been to. If you just keep walking, it's just all beach or rocks, but it's a beach and there was just people like laughing and singing and just having, um, drinks and they had speakers and it was just, everyone was just so happy down there. And it was just, it was such a wonderful place to be. I didn't think that it would be like that. And then I got down there and it was just, people were smiling and having fun and offering food. It was, it was absolutely beautiful. So I love that. Um, above that picture, there's the two girls, the redhead with curly hair and the other girl with the brown straight hair. Those were probably my two best friends in the class. That's Frida and Frank. Um, they were so sweet we did a lot of things together we always went out to eat we would always go shopping together they would always take me into the city and then because the city had more shopping centers than my small little town and they would always take me there and we would go shopping and eat some more and they always did christmas things with me so they're some of my favorite people on exchange and then the polaroid that's next to that her name is maria and she's the same polaroid down at the bottom next to where the beach was um she lived in my town and we played handball together so while i was in denmark i ended up playing um a sport called handball and it's i want to say it's like soccer but i know it's not like soccer it's similar to soccer i have to say but you play with your hands instead of your feet um, and I, it's not exactly like it but it has similar like there's similarities to it and that's how i try to explain it it's a very competitive sport and it was just, it was so much fun. And she was actually in the same class as Nikolai and Ida, my friends from the other slide with the redhead and stuff. 
So we would also always do things together. I was always busy. I, <laughs> I was always like never home and stuff, but it was so much fun. And I was so happy to have her. I think she lived like two or three minutes from me. So we spent a lot of time together and it was just so nice to be with her. Um, and then the photo above that is a photo that my host sister had taken of me. That's on this, that's on the little island that our summer house was on. And every single night we would go to the beach and my host dad and my host sisters and I, we would go um, mussel, we would go catch mussels. And then we would go back and my host mom would be like making some pasta with my other host sister. And we would give her the mussels and then we'd all help cook and we ate mussels pasta, mussel soup for like four or five days. Um, and then the other photos, the other photos of the Polaroids, those, that was my last night when I was with everybody. Um, and it was just my last day of exchange with everybody. And I had been hanging out with friends the whole time that night. And I remember I had made this big cake and I think I had about five to six people there and it was just like my mini going away party and it was so much fun. And yeah, so yeah, that's my exchange year. Um, Corona had impacted my exchange with, um, we were supposed to go on this thing called Euro tour where we would start in Denmark, where we would start in Denmark and then we would go down into Germany. And then I think we hit Austria and Italy and France and all those places and we do it on a bus and then we would go with everybody in our district. Um, Eurotour had canceled that. Um, compared to in the United States, we didn't have like a last day. It was just a Wednesday night and I remember we have a class group chat and I was in the chat, yeah, I was in the chat and <laughs> I, w I think I was packing for school the next day and they said that someone had texted in and said that the queen had texted or had given an announcement that said that we weren't going back to school. So um, after I think March 13th or something, I haven't been back to school because we never had an official last day. So I never really got to say goodbye to everybody. Um, a lot of countries were very scared because of Corona because it everybody was locked down in a very quick amount of time. So a lot of people went home before we could say goodbye to everybody. Um, I think I only got to see two of my exchange friends before I had to leave because other people, they would, be there and then all of a sudden they had to go home. My one friend Gabriel who lived in my town, um, he had texted me when he was on his flight actually and he said my parents texted me last night and said that I had to get on this flight um, and I had to go home. So I never got to say bye to him and it was just um, a lot happening at once. It was a lot of you didn't get to say goodbyes, you didn't get to enjoy your last moments that you should have had and like all these different things but despite how bad it ended it was an amazing experience so yeah that was my exchange <laughs> and, yeah what a wonderful wonderful summary um tell me a little bit about your um, host families what what did they do and how did they get involved with your did they do a lot of the traveling? It sounded like you were with the kids and, and exchange students a lot. Tell us a little bit about the families and what their uh, living was and, and the housing like and so on and so forth. Yeah, my first host family I actually wasn't really close with. Um, it was more as if I was living there. Um, we lived super far from everybody, so I had to cycle about three miles in the morning to get to a train station to get on a train and go to school. So... Um, yeah, I didn't do much with my first host family. My host sister, so they have this thing in Denmark called after school. And it's like where you live on school during the year. And then you would come home on the weekends. And then you would go back for the week. And you would like sleep there and do all these things. And so the host sister was the only person that I was like close to. And she was never home. Um, so my host fam, <laughs> yeah. So my first host family I wasn't really close with. But they were very nice people. We just didn't really click. Um, my second host family, we did so much together. I think I would cook with them every night. My host sister, the older one, she was 14. We did handball at the same time. So her and I, we would actually cycle up to the school. It was about a 10 minute cycle or yeah, bicycle. And we would just cycle up and then we'd go and we'd play handball together. Um, and then they went to a different school than me. So I never went to school with them. But yeah, my host mom, we would always drive down to like the Metropole together and we would get like food and we would go shopping. So I did a lot of stuff with my second host family. Um, when it came to traveling, I don't think I ever really traveled with them other than going down to the summer house. But when we would go down to the summer house, I would always 
sometimes I would take a train with Sa if we had things to do, like before we would go, or I would get in a car with like my host family and we would go and we'd listen to music and yeah. So my second, my second host family was more involved and they always came to my things and like she came to dance, see me or watch me dance long Shia and sometimes if it was raining, she would take me to school. So that was really nice. <laughs> but yeah, so it was a lot. And I just, I love my second host family. They were amazing. <laughs> so tell us about the Rotary, Rotary Club that was hosting you there. Did you okay. have much contact with them? Yeah. So we had meetings every other week, um, every Tuesdays. They were the nicest group of people. Um, we would start every Rotary meeting with a song and all of the Rotarians, they only host every other year. So they're all very involved in every student's exchanges. Um, I remember two or three of them had taken me to go watch professional handball games because um, they had like family members that were involved with it. And then one of them had taken me to go see this um, beautiful play with his wife and they had, um, we first went to their house and they would make like, they made this lovely dinner. I don't know what it was, but it was amazing. I only had it once and I was so upset that I never got to eat it again, but it was absolutely delicious. <laughs> and then um, we had gone to see this Christmas musical and um, yeah, they were very involved. They always made sure everything was okay. Um, they were very funny. Um, we would always be making jokes and it was just, it was a very lovely Rotary Club and my counselor, his wife worked at my school. So I was always in contact with them. And then I had a protection officer while I was there and I would always go to their house and then we would make food and they would, sometimes I would stay the night at their house and I would like hang out with them and cook and like do all these different things. So they were super involved and was all, there was always somebody I could call. There was always somebody that I could go to if I was ever having a problem. So it's a very, very lovely Rotary Club. Awesome. Yeah. Any questions? When did you get back? Um, May 18th. I, yeah, I think May 18th. My flights were really crazy. So we didn't actually have like an official date that I came back, but I think it was May 18th around that. Cause that's when I had left. So, yeah. So was the handball like as a team sport where you're throwing the ball back and forth, but you're running down the field like soccer? I'm trying to visualize what yeah, you described. Yeah, definitely. So there's about, I think, nine people on the court at a time. And there was two goals at the end and you had to like pass it back and forth. But it was also aggressive. So like you could like push somebody or like sometimes you have to like fight for the ball and stuff. And I was very confused for like the first like three times that I had played. I just like didn't like I would see people getting in a fight and I would like back away like this because I didn't want to get in trouble. And my coach would be like, get in the game. <laughs> and I'd be like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> so it was super funny. And it was just like it was it's just an it's aggressive soccer with your hands. That's how I try to explain it. It's just super duper aggressive. <laughs> it is really stressful but it's so much fun and it was just so nice to be able to like play because it helped me get to know a lot of the people because a lot of them had gone to my school. So it was super nice, but then I would also feel bad because it was like, I would like tackle somebody on the floor, but then I had to be friends with them when I saw them at school. And I was like, oh, it's kind of weird. <laughs> but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's definitely a strange, but it's very fun. And language, was it an issue at all? No. Um, I got to the point where I could understand it. Um, I could speak it when I had to speak it, but um, Danish, it's very hard to catch the accent and everybody learned English when they were in the first grade. So when I was with my friends, they would usually speak Danish to me and I would speak English to them. But when I was like with my host family and when I was with um, in public, like ordering and stuff, I would always order in Danish. So I was fluent, but unless I was with my friends because they hated my accent. So they were like, please just speak English to me. And I was like, but I want to learn Danish. They're like, we're not going to speak to you if you speak Danish. <laughs> so it was just easier for them for me to speak English to them. But it was very, everything was Danish based. I was able to read Danish at the end. Um, if we were watching a Danish movie, I just had to have subtitles on in Danish because it sometimes if they started going really fast, I like I couldn't hear it. So I would need it. To, <laughs> I would need to be able to read it. But um, it was about two or three months that I was able to start comprehending what was happening around me and what was going on. And I was like, okay. That's great. Yeah. 
So it was super, once I like knew that I knew what I was doing, I was like, this is nice. I was like, it doesn't just sound like some noises in the background anymore. Like I can actually listen to other conversations, which was super fun. So yeah, that was great. <laughs> That's great. Any other questions from club members? Did you study the language at all before you went or just kind of picked it up while you were there? I just picked it up while I was there. They had given us Pimsleur through our district, um, District 5050, but Pimsleur was just so boring. So it got to the point where I would just play it and I would walk away or I would play it and I would tell myself that I would listen to it. And all of a sudden I'm like drawing a flower on like a piece of paper and I don't, I didn't listen to anything. So I attempted to learn, but I didn't. Um, but when I first got there, cause they never gave me the assignments for like the first two or three months because of the language, I would just do Duolingo. Cause we would get compute. So all of our work was on our computers. We never had paperwork. We never had papers or anything. It was all on a computer. So while everyone else was doing their assignments and stuff, I would just hop on Duolingo and I would play and play for hours on end. So now when I see Duolingo, I want to cry. But other than that, Duolingo really helped me for, for like one or two months. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, that's great. Anybody else? Can you say, give me ice cream in Danish? Um, that means, um, may I have the ice cream? Yeah, it's so good. Danish ice cream was absolutely amazing. They had so much of it. And then they had like these different toppings. They have this thing called fine chocolate and they would like take your soft ice cream and they would dip it in it. And it was like hot chocolate powder kind of, but it wasn't. And it was absolutely amazing. And they would put like hot fudge on top of it. And I was like, we need this in the United States. We need this, we need this right now. I don't care what I need to do. I will take a box of it home, but it was absolutely amazing. I probably ate ice cream like once a week when I was there. <laughs> it was so good. Well, now you have an entrepreneurial opportunity for you from that. You can bring that over and import it and sell mm -hmm. it to the people. Yeah, exactly. My host mom was making jokes because they have this thing called shoehorns where you put them in the back of your shoe and then you can like slip your foot in it so you don't have to untie it. And she was like, Malia, we can do a black market kind of, you know, she was like, I can send you shoehorns. You can sell them on the down low. You can bring me American things like fruit roll ups and gushers. I can sell them to the kids. You can sell them to adults. <laughs> and she's like, nobody has to know. And I was like, I don't think that's allowed. <laughs> But the first smugglers i love it <laughs> exactly i was like yeah it sounds like a plan so yeah it was super fun malia yeah hi um i actually kept uh, my screen off because uh, i just wanted my kids also to watch it um they were a little shy like uh, you know to be in front of the screen okay. thank you so much for sharing your experience i mean it was so awesome because i i grew up in india and my kids are born and brought up here. So, I mean, for us, like, you know, even this concept of exchange student is so mm -hmm. new. And I mean, I don't even know how old you are. I didn't want to ask. But, oh, 17. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So are you, of, uh, are you still in high school? Yeah, I'm finishing my senior year this year. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. See, I mean, it's such an amazing experience, right? Like, so I was just wondering, like, I mean, is this your first off, uh, overseas uh, trip? Yeah, I had never been overseas before, wow. so it was super stressful. Or I wouldn't say it was stressful because I love like when everything's like chaotic and stuff. So I actually had so much fun just like getting there. And then once I ended up in Amsterdam, I met with other exchange students, and we all took our flight into Denmark. Wow. So it was amazing, and it was absolutely wonderful. Yeah, this is such an awesome experience. I mean, I, we were just talking about like you know we should host somebody at yes. you know here. That would be yes. such a great opportunity too. Yeah, because I noticed like with every exchange student, like even if I didn't live with them, every time I met them, there was just so much culture that they had. And like a lot of them loved to like cook and they did art. And I remember always seeing people's like Instagram stories and stuff. And they just brought so much culture with them. And it was just so amazing. I was like, I would sometimes ask my host, I was like, can we host somebody? And she's like, we're hosting you. <laughs> we can't take somebody else in. But yeah, it was, I would recommend it. It would probably be such an amazing experience. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get in touch with you later to understand more about this program. And I think it'll be so inspiring if uh, we can share this recording like with other youngsters too, because I think your perspective of, about like whatever you shared today was so beautiful. Thank you. Yes, yes. I would love to get in contact. <laughs> Thanks a lot. But, and also keep Rotary close to your heart as you uh, continue to grow and remember, uh, join us and help spread world, world peace. Yes, of course. That's my main goal. I do want to stay part of it and continue to help and volunteer and do all as much as I can. 
get involved with Interact and, and yeah. a, after high school, there's Rotaract. Yeah. So I want to continue to do all that and then just stay in contact. And I think um, District 5050 is going to have Rotex and that does like a lot of things as well. We haven't gotten much information on it, but they've at least talked about it a little bit through emails with since we've been gone. So with everything happening, we would just glimpse it, but I think they're going to get Rotor Rotex and stuff that'll help us stay involved and stuff. Any college plans? Um, I actually want to take a year off after I graduate and travel. Um, I think I might take two years off and work one year and then go and just travel and just kind of see where I go. I think I'm going to start in Australia and then just see when I come home. Um, and then after that, I want to go to Hawaii and then because I want to be part of Peace Corps and Peace Corps in Hawaii is part of that college so that I can still volunteer and then get my credits and stuff. And I want to major in child law care, something like that, and then work with like family development and then work with the foster care system and then hopefully travel and just kind of help and work with foster kids and stuff. Hopefully that's, that's my cool. goal, but we'll just see how it goes and just, just taking everything with a grain of salt just to see what happens in the future and, and just, yeah. Well, we wish you well. It was a wonderful presentation. You brought joy to our uh, hearts and adventure to our souls. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was amazing. You guys yeah. are a great audience. <laughs> and before I